Hey guys, thanks for coming to our channel, Think DIY, where we're actually here to build projects, show you that average Joe Schmoes like us can actually build something and then take that process and then actually hopefully show you tips and tricks that you'll learn, we're gonna learn. As of right now, we work 40 hours a week, we have families, we have other hobbies, stuff that we wanna do, and then trying to fit uh, projects in like this. Also at the same time, we are not video editors, we don't know how to shoot cameras, we're learning software on how to do all this editing, we're trying to figure out lighting, we're trying to figure out how the best way to explain this to you, and then on top of it, we're not comfortable talking to cameras. Hopefully through this set of series on building this and then moving on to another project and hopefully just kind of keep snowballing and project and project. Projects are going to range from anything as what we've got now is backhoe we're going to do, uh, I think we got a camper that we're going to basically redo from the ground up. It's got some water damage and stuff like that. We're going to do projects like that and then, you know, we're going to dabble into some of the smaller projects that you like see on like, what, Pinterest or whatever. Yeah, some metal, some woodwork, some metal, woodwork. tables, stuff like that. There's stuff that pretty much everybody loves. So, ba yeah, so basically stuff that I see that like I've watched on YouTube, you know, and then be like, oh, that's a daunting, very daunting task. I don't want to do it. I don't know how much it costs. I don't know the material. I don't know the tools. We decided that, hey, we want to create a channel that actually shows you the materials that we need, the cost when it's all done, and then the learning process of learning as we go, like learning woodworking, whatever the other stuff that we got to go with this. So hopefully you stay with us, stay with the channel, learn with us, grow with us, watch us as we grow. So as of right now, we're going to start on the back. I'm going to let Ryan Tate kind of explain the mower and kind of a little bit more details of like the blueprints and how we're going to roll with this. So as Jason said, this is actually a backhoe for a lawnmower. It's a 1980 John Deere 210. Last year, I already built the uh, the front end loader for it. Works phenomenal. So I said, hey, let's go ahead and do the backhoe on it. Why not? You know, a little lawn tractor that's got a front end loader and a backhoe. Let's go for it. We ordered these plants and the loader plants from pfengineering.com. Check them out if you want to get these plans. So this is actually designed for a Cub Cadet 149. So we're gonna have to modify a little bit of these plans to get them to work on ours. We labeled and we took out all these pages and we put them in the steps that we are gonna do these in. And if you look at this wall, this wall is huge. And you can see there's 19 different pages that we have. This very first one that we have here is the overview of the entire project. And it breaks it down and this is how, this is the order that we're gonna follow just cause that kind of how the backhoe goes together. Today, is gonna be step number four. This is gonna be the slew pivot, which is really what the whole arm attaches to, which mounts to this little frame here. Little, it's like 75 pounds, it's pretty big. It's not little. We're gonna actually go into detail with this. So you can see the blueprints, you're gonna be able to see the measurements, see what we're looking at. If you've never looked at blueprints before, we're gonna show you. And we're actually probably gonna learn some stuff with you too. That's the only other blueprints we had were for the front end loader, and that was easy compared to this. There is a lot of little angles and cuts, but hey, if we can do it, you can do it. You guys can do it too. So with that being said, let's jump into that. We'll do a little time lapse of this piece right here, just so you guys can kind of see it. And hopefully we will give you enough information with the rest of the videos that you guys can make this all on your own. It's actually pretty simple. There's not a whole lot of weird angles until you get to some other stuff in here, but we're gonna start with this one here, step number four. And don't, uh, I just wanna put one thing in. Don't expect to watch this video and be able to build this. You are going to need the blueprints no matter what. We can't show, we can't show you enough information on that. So if there's something your interest you are going to need these we there's no way we can show all the information it's just it's just too daunting and you're going to need all the details and everything he sends out a material list with it so you guys can actually go through and see exactly what you're going to need you can call your local steel yard and they can give you prices on it i called around i think five different places and the one that was actually closest to us a mile away was the cheapest i think this was $400 for all the metal for it. And then you got hydraulics and stuff. So it, it, it's not gonna be a cheap project, but it is gonna save you a ton of money if it's something that you want. So basically we're gonna show you, instead of going out and spending 10, 15 grand on one, you can actually buy a mower, spend a quarter of that, and get the actual same results that you want. You know, minus the labor that's gonna take you into it. And tools if you need special tools at the same time. Exactly. So let's get going on this next piece or next sexual step, and let's go get building and show you what the materials that we got. All right guys, so this is our pot of metal that we bought for the backhoe. Right now we're, we're going through the blueprint so we can figure out what exactly we need uh, for this slew pivot. 
that we're making. Getting everything laid out on the table so we can show you guys before we get to work cutting it. But our blueprint uh, number four here is what we're making today. Uh, if you look at this, this is the key that explains everything that you're going to need. So this is the overview part of it. So this is the piece that we're making right here. Uh, this is what it's going to look like, hopefully when it's done. Main goal there is to get it to look like the picture. Um, then it breaks it down into all these other little steps that we have. Now every measurement we need is somewhere in one of these steps. We just got to figure out where it is. That's the, the fun to reading blueprints. Um, so we're going to go through. All these are labeled. We're going to figure out all the pieces that we need, all the bushing stock, all that, square tubing, flat stock, all that stuff. Go through it. This tells you exactly what you need. So, uh, for example, this piece here. Uh, if you notice a little number right there, number seven, that tells you exactly what you need uh, to make that. So if we go down to the key, we find number seven. That is a four by three by eighth inch square tubing. So we just go through all that, come down here, and we know exactly what we need. Now for these bushings, labeled B2, B8, B7, B6, all that, all that good stuff, uh, we actually have a, another paper, which is right down here. This one is our bushing one. And you can see uh, B, yeah, the Bs are up here. B1, B2, B6, and it tells you different lengths. Uh, it tells you what they're supposed to look like, sizes, all that good stuff. Um, so we're gonna get all our stock put together, get it laid out, and show you guys how we cut it, different tools that we use. Um, we have some different, we have a plasma cutter and all that, which you don't need, but makes it a lot easier. Um, but that's where we are at right now. Let's get it all put together. All right, guys. So our next step in this project is to make it in the spindle. This is the pieces of metal that we need. We're not going to need all of this. We're going to have to cut what we need. So we got just the main base. We're going to support the weight. We're going to have the actual like main brackets that sit on top. We're going to have bushings, which is the hollow pipe, pipe that we're going to put through. And then basically this big bad boy, which is going to be the big, big pin that all the weight's going to sit on and actually want to swivel back around from the tractor. So from here, all we got to do is measure what we need. Cut it down, like I said, we want to show you a chop saw grinder. Cut it down, and then from there we can move on to drilling holes and whatever we need to do, and then welding it together. Right now we're cutting uh, two brackets for the uh, one of the main uh, basically backbones of this spindle piece. It's actually going to be the two brackets are actually going to hold backhoe pretty much onto this uh, frame basically. Yeah. So what Ryan's got now is he's actually got a plasma cutter. So you can use an angle grinder, you can use a chop saw if you want to, but you can't tell that this is a very long piece that we, we're using right now. We're going to be, you know, it's going to be used throughout the build. So to make everything fast, you're going to use a plasma cutter to basically cut this like butter. <laughs> So far we've got tubing cut, a flat stock cut, both sizes, three inch, four inch, and then we're moving on to bushings, which the pins are actually gonna go through. So now we gotta go find the measurements for all that stuff. All right, so the first 
bushing we're going to cut is going to be this long one here, which is number six, which if you come down here, tells you what it is, inch and a half by one inch. Um, so now we got to find it. Uh, detail three. So if we look here, it gives us all our measurements that we need. Six and three quarters is going to be the length of it. And then we got to drill and tap um, for the uh, greaserts. Because uh, this pin on this paper is what's going to go through there. So these two papers are actually connected. Um, so we'll drill and tap those, we'll cut that, and then we'll come back and we'll do all these little bushings right here. All right guys, so we got everything cut out. So now what we're gonna do is actually clean up a lot of this. Uh, you see the plasma cutter left a little bit of slag on there. So we're gonna uh, use the sander, and get them all cleaned up, and then we're gonna go through and actually, we have to cut out some notches and some weird stuff in there. Um, so once we get them cleaned up, we're going to cut all that out and then we're going to take it over to the drill press and drill all the holes for the bushings and everything else that needs to go into it. And then we'll lay it out and we'll show you again exactly what it all looks like. basically at a point that we need to start cutting these curves like this curve here this curve here these notches here and then this angled plate in here uh, basically on the plans you can kind of see that there is a blueprint on getting action on a radius so basically you just come up uh, an inch and five eighths and then two and sixteenth that will give you the center and then basically you can make a with one of the a compass and actually go on one and one sixteenth and that should get our radius for that and then the same with these ears here. So let's go to over and see him get drawn down. Man, new office? What? holes that we have and then we've also marked all the little cutouts that we have to do so this is gonna be I think a cylinder is gonna mount to this so we have this nice radius long piece that we got to cut out um, this little weird looking piece here that's got to get cut out of there um, these little brackets this little middle section has to get cut out so we're gonna use the uh, the old plasma cutter there so we can uh, cut all that good stuff out. And I'm gonna try to freehand that. Wish me luck.
All right, guys, we finally got everything cut. It's been a long day. We turned in blueprints into the pieces that you see right here. Uh, we got all our angles, all our holes, all our notches, everything has been drilled out, ready to be tack welded together. Now it's getting late, um, so we are gonna go home, get some sleep, we'll come back at it tomorrow. So we'll catch you tomorrow. What's going on guys? Back at it for another day. Uh, yesterday we got all this stuff cut, um, drilled out, and then at the end of the night we realized all these bushings that we cut except for one was the wrong stuff. So we uh, cut some new ones. That's what happens when you don't sleep a whole lot <clears throat> because of the crazy shift that you work. So all these little ones, no good anymore, but luckily it was not very much. So we still have quite a bit of this stuff left. The plans, I think they give you extra anyway. So we're gonna hope that's the case when we get to the end and hope that we have enough. So what we're gonna do now is tack everything together. Um, I got one piece set up right there, ready to go. Um, we're gonna tack all these bushings, get everything tacked together on that, mount it to the actual frame that we already built. We're gonna run this rod through. We actually had to sand this down a little bit because the measurements were so close we could not fit these bushings on top of there. So we ground it down. Fits pretty good now. So we're just going to do a light tack on everything. Run the pin all the way through so that all of our um, bushings, everything lines up. It spins just like it's supposed to so it doesn't bind or anything. Um, and then we'll do a final weld on it and that will be complete for this project. So let's get to work and knock this out real quick. assembled together with this one inch rod going through it. And the reason we did that before we welded anything is to make sure that we have all of our bushings lined up together. There's no way we're gonna be able to bend this one inch pin if, if something's a little bit off. So what we're gonna do is just tack what we have right here together. We're gonna to throw it on the main frame that we've already built, um, run this pin all the way through it, then we're going to weld it a little bit better, a little stronger. That way when we take it off, we can do the finish weld and our pin should line up perfect with it. So you can see every, every this thing's kind of off just a little bit. That's why we wanted to go ahead and run this because if we were to, to weld everything the way it's supposed to be, according to the blueprint, nine times out of 10, something is going to be off and you're going to be screwed. So this is how we're doing it right here. I would recommend to do it that way just so everything is lined up and you can guarantee that it's going to be lined up. Um, so let's uh, jump in, get this tacked. We're going to bring up the, uh, the main frame. We'll show you kind of how we're going to do that, weld that a little bit. Then we're going to pull this uh, slew pivot back off, finish weld it, and uh, do all the rest of this little stuff, and then we'll be done with it. So let's go. Did have to do a little grinding to it because it was kind of stuck. So now we're going to take this slew pivot that we just tacked together, got all cut and ready for you. 
Um, we're going to mount it to this main frame. This is the frame that we, uh, we built a couple weeks ago. Um, didn't get a whole lot of footage on it. But now I'm going to run this pin all the way through everything in here. I'm going to weld it just a little bit more. That way when I do my finish welding, it's not going to move at all. So, I'm going to get this thing mounted up. So obviously this pin is going to be shorter. We just leave it long like this so we can keep taking it out. But what's going to happen is this is the main frame. This is going to be the backbone of this backhoe. It's going to mount to the back of the tractor over there. This is the slew pivot. This is what's going to hold the arm, all the cylinders, the digging action. So this pin is actually going to be the main point of the whole backhoe as far as all the load, the pressure, the weight, everything's going to be on this pin. So it's got to be pretty strong. But what it's going to do is the rest of the brackets that we have are going to hang down here. The cylinder is going to get mounted here. That's what's going to turn it. So you're going to have your action like that. So the arm will be mounted straight from here with the bucket and you're going to be able to turn probably depending on the, the, uh, the cylinder. I don't think you're going to be able to turn to the right very well. It's going to be more all the way to the left. But that's how it's going to work. The arm's going to be mounted there. You're going to be able to turn it, dig just like a a regular backhoe. So let me uh, tighten up some of these welds here, make sure nothing's going to move, and we're going to pull it back off, finish weld it, add the brackets, and this piece will be done. Uh, the slew pivot, we've got it uh, all welded, finished welded, all put together. Um, it is mounted to the uh, big frame that we have that's going to go on the back of the tractor. So what it's going to do, like I explained earlier, this thing is going to move, rotate back and forth. The cylinder is going to hook into there and into there. There will be another big pin that's going to go down right through the middle of this that's going to connect to the cylinder. That's what you're going to have that's going to go back and forth. The, uh, the cylinder for the boom arm is going to mount here and the boom arm is actually going to mount right here. Then it'll have a big uh, bucket on the end of that. That is our next project, the boom arm. Two projects down, 27 more to go. We'll catch you next time.